Bloodsport, for a B movie, you know, a low budget B movie, has impacted so many things in pop culture, which is which is pretty crazy. Hello and welcome to a long-awaited episode of Tales from the VHS Vault. It's been a long time, over a year since we've done one of these. Yeah. And we thought we'd bring it back because we actually had a, a fan request us do one further down in the year, so we kind of got to get back in the rhythm of it too. This is going to be a little different than our usual reviews. This is more of a retrospective discussion of almost how these movies influenced our lives and, and pop culture in general for us 80s and 90s kids. And today we're going to be talking about Bloodsport. <laughs> yeah, 1988. I remember when this first came out, my mom was like, she saw it in the, on the, in the TV guide and it turned into like this big, this big thing in the house. She's like, okay, oh, blood sports on. We, we gotta watch it. We gotta watch it. Some event? Yeah, it was like a big event. Van Damme, this was like his, pretty much his breakout movie, right? He had been in all those kind of smaller roles and stuff beforehand. So, oh man, it, I remember sitting on the floor, like in the, in the living room there watching it. And oh, it was just a powerhouse, just incredible movie. I had never seen it. You introduced me to it, because like you said, you saw it first with your mom. You had taped it off TV, right? So it was all grainy and shitty. And <laughs> yeah. uh, the version I remember watching forever, I think I had taped off your taped version, <laughs> so it was even <laughs> shittier, right? I forgot that you did that. Because it was off of TV, all the swears and stuff were blanked out. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw the real version, it kind of like took me by surprise. Oh, there's cursing in this. I was so used of waiting for that I ain't your pal. I ain't your pal. And he stops for no reason, <laughs> right? Dick face. Instead of dick face. <laughs> dick face. And I wanted my own copy, like a real copy of Bloodsport on VHS. And I remember for some reason it was really hard to find. Yeah, it was. Like new at the store, at the local stores, the HMV at the time, or the Bay and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Zellers. Zellers. <laughs> my mom had my aunts even hunting around their local yeah. movie stores looking for a version of Bloodsport. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that, yeah. And I finally got one, and it was a used VHS that was an old rent. So it's a it's a clamshell cut box style, and that's still the one I have till to this day. But for some reason, it wasn't easy to find brand new. No, and it's still kind of hard to find. Actually, I just recently, maybe what a year or two ago, had just found my copy. Why does Bloodsport have such a long-lasting impression on us and pop culture in general? Brought the whole sort of karate genre back from the dead, right? Yeah, because Bruce Lee movies were very popular in the 70s, and he kind of yeah. put that genre on the map, I think, here in North America. Then Chuck Norris came out and did doing all his stuff, but I think that Chuck Norris almost became oversaturated. His movies are more action with a little bit of karate, right? Right, yeah. This yeah. movie just kind of, it just punched you right in the face. It was just all martial arts showcasing different uh, countries right different styles hit it against each other so you could see the different styles yeah. how the styles worked against each other which was really cool yeah it was probably the first time we really saw something like that in a north american movie i think it was probably very common in the hong kong style probably martial arts movies but it was kind of an eye-opener for us kids saying oh there's different kinds of martial yeah. arts it's not just karate uh, yeah you know and they didn't hold back right it there's a lot of blood in this movie yeah it's a lot there's a lot of violence that's why they call this thing blood sport kid it's a good story uh, whether it's true or not is to be of <laughs> course debated we'll get to that later but it's a good underdog story you know this white kid who was trained by his japanese shidoshi yeah whatever the hell that means <laughs> who cares if bruce springsteen is a shidoshi almost against his will because he didn't want to train him right because yeah. he's not japanese yeah. he's not a tanaka. not a tanaka who ends up coming up and winning this big kumite this martial arts tournament so it's an underdog story in a way yeah and it just kind of shows you too that you don't need to be a specific race, breed, or creed to yeah. do the specific martial art yeah. well. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, anybody can do it as long as they're trained properly. Bloodsport, for a B movie, you know, a low budget B movie, 
has impacted so many things in pop culture, which is which is pretty crazy. Mortal Kombat, the <laughs> video game, was basically based off of blood sport, inspired by that kind of different styles against each other karate tournament. Johnny Cage is Van Damme. <laughs> Just look at him; it's he's Van Damme. Yeah, yeah. And even kind of like the finishing moves too. Not that brutal, but yeah. there were kind of like finishing moves yeah. in. Blood sport. Well, it, and Johnny Cage does the splits, right? Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And then when the first UFC came out, it was like, oh my God, we're watching blood sport for real. Yeah. You know, different styles against different styles. Pretty evident that I think blood sport inspired that kind of real life martial art tournament because I don't know if there would have been a UFC one without blood sport. Yeah, That's up know. for debate, right? But <laughs> yeah. it's like. They didn't come out too far apart, really. When you watch that first UFC, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Like the like the stupid like that boxer with the one glove. <laughs> like it's like a fucking video game. Yeah. It's yeah. like a movie. It's yeah. like you're watching a fucking movie. It's entertaining as hell, that's for sure. And also it's influenced us and our show quite a bit. A lot of our sketches are blood sport related. All you have to do is watch our channel. Bam! Set. Set. We did the Canada Day training montage, which is based both off of blood sport and kickbox, or it's, it's a like a meld. a meld between those two training montages. The opening sketch for Uncle Sam, where you're training yeah. like Tanaka hitting yeah. you with that stick. Flare! Flare! And we have more blood sports sketches written down, you know, in our back pocket for future episodes. It's a piece of shit! It's not forgotten! You told me to review any movie that works. So it's like, even though we're a horror movie channel, it's hard not to put these other influences in the show to kind yeah. of like show that yeah we do love other things besides horror. Blood sport is definitely one of those movies. Like Christ, last time we shot after we're done shooting and just chilling out, we put on Bloodsport. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what inspired us to shoot another one of these VHS tales because we put it in. It's like, how many times have we watched this movie? And it's just as enjoyable every time yeah. you watch it. Fuck, I just finished watching the final fight there on YouTube the other day. Yeah, it's like, it, it doesn't <laughs> just, get old. No. It just doesn't get old. Lightning in a bottle, right? You have the right actors. Fight choreography is really good. Can't not talk about the music. Yeah, the music, the soundtrack for this movie is incredible. I don't think it would have as much impact if it didn't have as good a soundtrack. Yeah, it's definitely an example of a soundtrack making a movie. And you know, again, that soundtrack has influenced our channel. There's been moments in the channel where we throw in music that's very similar to yeah. Bloodsport just to have that that late 80s martial arts movie vibe. The Lawrence Talbot, the Wolfman Beast, to the hunchback slave who won the beast. Dracula fought in silly robes, in Gilman ripped off my earlobes. The Kumite, I fought the and Bloodsport was apparently modeled on the real Frank Dukes, <laughs> whose story is extremely debatable. Nothing can be corroborated. <laughs> So it's almost like the perfect bullshit story. You can't prove anything, but you can't disprove anything either. Frank Dukes came up with the idea for Bloodsport, and he's apparently it was based off of his real life exploits. Exploits <laughs> as a tournament fighter. And even at the end of the movie, when it says like Frank Dukes fought this many matches and this many knockouts, and you look at the number, you're like, how can you fight that many fights in one tournament? Yeah, 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 there's not even that many people in the tournament. <laughs> and then he's gone on interviews saying, well, no, it's because the tournament was different. You fight the same guy like maybe five times in the tournament. So actually, it, there's less people, but more fights. But even then, <laughs> that's still 300 and some odd matches in the span of a weekend. Yeah, like that's you, a lot. That's a lot of fights. Like, if you take one hit in half of those fights, Mm -hmm. You would be done <laughs> yeah, for the next day. You wouldn't be able to compete the next day. There's that documentary, Put Up Your Dukes, which is actually really good. And you learn a lot about how much of a bullshitter 
Frank Dukes really is. Hard to corroborate any of this stuff. Like, he has all those Russian generals telling those <laughs> stories. You, you don't know if they're real Russian generals. Or, it could just be actors. Yeah, so Frank Dukes, <laughs> well, Frank Dukes claims to have won, won the Kumite tournament, which is an underground fighting tournament, but he also claims that he's like a secret agent for the CIA. Yeah, and all that shit. And all this stuff, and like, none of it can be proven. And it's, and it's so easy and fun to go down the Frank Dukes rabbit hole. I've done it so many times. Yeah. And the reason being is because deep down inside, I kind of want it to be true. You do. You want to believe this guy because you've invested so much in the Bloodsport movie. Please, <laughs> just like, have that footage that he always says exists of him winning the Kumite. Mm -hmm. Just someone please release that so we can all just put this to bed. But we know that's never going to happen. But deep down inside, you just want yeah, it to be true. How come there's no pictures at least? There's that picture not... of him holding that trophy? <laughs> it could be from anywhere. That he all bought? <laughs> that receipt all proves that he bought the trophy? It's all bullshit. But entertaining nonetheless. And it also adds... To the whole mythos yeah. of the whole blood sport thing. Whether Frank Dukes is full of shit or not, we still have to thank him because without Frank Dukes, we wouldn't have this amazing movie that all us 80s and 90s kids adore yeah. and watch endlessly in quotes all the time. I hope so. Yeah. I hope it will. You know, it's funny. I was at this Christmas party and there was this guy there dancing and he was kind of dancing like Van Damme and Kickboxer. Yeah. And I don't think on purpose either. You just bad. Um, so I go to him like, man, are you doing that on purpose? You're kind of dancing like Van Damme from Kickboxer. And he was a younger guy, right? Mm -hmm. And he had no clue what I was talking about. Not only did he not know what Kickboxer is. Okay, that's fine. You don't know what Kickboxer is. But he didn't know who Van Damme was. Ugh. Well, it's like, the guy's a movie star. You don't know who Jean-Claude Van Damme is? Yeah. And that kind of made me sad. You know, <laughs> I'm, that's why I want movies like Bloodsport, Kickboxer to, to live on and, like, inspire these new generations. That's right, yeah. Because they're good movies. Yeah. And even when you take the fighting out of those movies, too, like the training montages and all the the drama and yeah. everything that they showcase is actually pretty good too. Training montage is a staple of those 80s movies yeah. and it's something that I wish would come back, you know. it Of course it's a little dated and it may not work in every modern movie, but there's something so special about those training montages. Like, yeah. bring it back! And you got the music and everything. It's akin to the 80s like action movies where they gotta get their guns, right? And yeah. you see, ch -ch -ch, yeah. you know, they're getting ready. Getting ready, right? yeah. yeah. Van Damme and Bloodsport inspired many, many people to take up real martial arts. That's right. Like, we took... It took judo, judo because for, of it. <laughs> for like a year because, oh, I want to be like Van, even though Van Damme didn't do judo, but still, it was like inspired us to take up something. We didn't stick with it, of course, but I'm sure there's tons of kids who took up some sort of martial art and didn't stick with it purely because of movies like Bloodsport. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who stuck with it we have become great martial artists because of Bloodsport. It was a huge thing when we were kids. Yeah. Every, I think every kid did something. We played blood sport in the basement sometimes and have to set up our own kumite yeah, thing, the, the kum mats. The mats and everything and <laughs> prepare the platform for the final <laughs> match. And then you try to lift the, uh, yeah. the pillows up at each end to make it have that V type look. And <laughs> yeah. Never actually got all that hurt. And really then tape, tape the soundtrack off of the TV by just holding uh, one yeah. of those shitty ghetto blasters up to the the speaker of the TV and record the soundtrack onto that and then play <laughs> yeah. the tape back with the music as you're pretending uh, to yeah. fight in the kumite. And you get all the sounds <laughs> from the movie yeah. too yeah, yeah. and everything. <laughs> Back when there was no YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you had to do shit like hold your ghetto blaster up to your <laughs> fucking TV and record yeah. the speaker itself. And press record and play at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't, the buttons would pop up, yeah. you know, it's like, ah. So if you have any stories about watching Bloodsport as a kid or even as an adult, please share it with us because... We are going to continue to watch Bloodsport <laughs> at least a couple of times a year. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's how important this movie is to us. And there's going to be a few more VHS tales coming out. So we're just kind of trying to get back in the groove, right? Trying to figure that's out right. exactly how this is going to be different from our regular episodes. 
Yeah. And I think it'll be just this, just us sitting around shooting the shit podcast style. But we don't want to use that term podcast because <laughs> hey, when people say, uh, come up to me and like, oh yeah, how's your podcast doing? I'm just like, it's not a fucking podcast. <laughs> what the fuck? It's yeah. anything but. Yeah. <laughs> Do you what see microphones in front of these faces? <laughs> and until next time, keep drinking.